Next on BYU Sports Nation, actual victory. BYU upsets a rival in 14th-ranked Boise State with a third-string quarterback. Is the season saved? How did the Cougars pull off the upset, and who gets the credit? Plus, ESPN's Trevor Maddich tells us what he saw in BYU's monumental win. It's a victory Monday. Let's go! Option left, Finau. Finau's got room to run. Finau second level, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Things open up, and there he goes. 10-5, touchdown! See you on Finau! It's a handoff to Katoa. It's a give to Hepo. It's a flea flicker and a throw to Bushman. It's complete, and another touchdown! 39-yard score on the reverse flea flicker. As a team, we know what we were capable of all year. And it was just amazing to see it all come together against Boise State tonight. This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live on a winning Monday. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy October 21st, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a man who can associate finally with a red coat in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, Jerem Jordan. Yeah, there was this weird, there was this girl who was dancing and was just like having a, a seizure-like moment. It was kind of weird. <laughs> She's okay. It wasn't a seizure. It was just her dance move. I think we call it the seizure. Uh, no, it was it was kind of weird. Um, yeah, maybe we'll show a video of that later. But it was it was in That Was Weird in the post game, And uh, there's an effort being made to try and get this... Uh, young lady a blue jacket yes. because she wore a red coat it needs to happen um yeah let's get her a blue coat can let's we combine forces and get this young lady a uh, blue coat a go fund me for <laughs> red coat cougar i think is what she calls herself on twitter now a really fun show on uh want? on the docket today what? espn's trevor maddich awesome. on how the byu cougars Pulled off that against rival Boise State. Incredible stuff. And by the way, Spuddy Buddy restored to its proper place. We have two of them. They're over there. We put them back up. We're good to go. Let's rock. Hey, Spuddy Buddy has been good to BYU Sports Nation the last two go-arounds. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl and now the latest Mm -hmm. matchup with Boise State. Okay. He's on good terms. He's on good terms. Yeah, so far so good. It wasn't good the third game ago, but... Yeah, the last two. Let's I'll go. I'll take what yeah. I can get. Yeah. Okay, we've got two in a row. Uh, also, our going for two picks recapped. Why and- I'm super glad I didn't get one of them. <laughs> I'm yes. so happy to be wrong about one of my picks. <laughs> I was totally wrong. Jerem sacrificing for the better of BYU That's Sports Nation. That wasn't what it was. I was just wrong. <laughs> just straight wrong. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Yes, BYU upsets. 14th ranked and previously unbeaten Boise State 28-25, snapping a three-game losing streak to the Broncos, snapping a three-game losing streak overall this season. And in his first career start, Baylor Romney throws for 221 yards, 16 completions, two touchdowns, including this flea flicker special to Matt Bushman. It's a handoff to Katoa. It's a give to Hefo. It's a flea flicker and a throw to Bushman. It's complete and another touchdown! 39-yard score on the reverse flea flicker. In that moment, I thought, okay, now the freak out is fully on for Boise State fans. Up 18 <laughs> yes. for BYU on the road. <laughs> Trickeration against Boise State. Yeah, take it's that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Out of that taste. Of all the teams. BYU football now has a bye week as they prepare for another rival, Utah State in Logan. The kick time and broadcast information just released. It is set for ESPN2, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific at Maverick Stadium in Logan, Utah. It will be roughly negative 30 degrees Celsius. Nice and balmy. Jamal Williams will have a, uh, had a touchdown catch in the Packers' 42-24 win over the Raiders, and Taysom Hill also had a touchdown catch for the Saints in a 36-25 win over the Bears. Hey, remember when uh, they were in the backfield together in 2016? I do. At BYU? Yeah. Yeah. Special time. I remember that. That was fun. Special time. Number five, BYU women's soccer. Ho-hum. Beats St. Mary's 8 to nothing. Whoa! Securing their highest scoring game against the West Coast Conference opponent this season. 
Elise Flake and Michaela Coulan each with a brace. Two goals. Flake recording her 33rd goal overall, putting her in a tie for eighth in the BYU all-time scoring record book. Das ist gut. And the BYU men's and women's cross-country teams took first and second at the NCAA Pre-Nationals Invitational this weekend. Awesome. Connor Mance won the men's race. Jacob Hesslington took fourth. On the women's side, the Cougars also finished first and fourth. Erica Burke Jarvis and Courtney Wayment. Well done. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. A third-string quarterback, fourth-string running back, extremely (laughs) banged-up offensive line. BYU just lost to a bad USF team in Tampa, and here comes 14th-ranked and undefeated Boise State into Provo. Jerem, how did BYU beat the Broncos of Boise State. I think there was a certain level of desperation that caused change uh, with the coaching staff, uh, had an increased sense of urgency, had uh, nuance, uh, exotic defense. We saw Diane Gonwilko in the backfield a lot. That's, he's good. When Just, has BYU run multiple safety blitzes? That was awesome. They moved him to safety, by the way, not corner. Uh, offensively, some creativity that we saw, right, with the uh, flea flickers and a fourth and one and a very aggressive call at the end of the game on the 34. To me, it was great coaching. Great coaching won this game for BYU because if you stack the personnel up, that BYU used against Boise State. And yes, Boise State used Chase Cord, their backup quarterback. Ah, BYU used its third string walk on Baylor Romney. Fourth string running back in Sione Fino, as you mentioned. The leading tackler is a guy that was playing running back earlier this season, like <laughs> almost earlier this month, you know, like a month ago. Tyler Algier, nine solo tackles. O line missing four of its top seven. The undefeated number four team in, team in the country who had won seven of nine against BYU. BYU's coming off two losses that they should have won, and they win this game because of good coaching. Remember, everyone wanted uh, halftime adjustments. Adjust. How is 21 nothing in the third quarter sound? Because that's what BYU did, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Not only does BYU score 21 points, they scored on 12 plays okay, okay. in the third quarter. A turnover will do that from Jackson Kafusi. I just loved what this BYU coaching staff did. They adjusted before the game. They adjusted in the game. And BYU beat Boise State. I mean, BYU has work to do in fourth quarters. They've been outscored 42-0 in the last three games. But BYU took care of business, got aggressive at the end, and won. I'm just so happy for BYU because, I mean, people were, people were calling for Kalani Satake's job after this. And now, now that that ceases and BYU has an opportunity and some confidence going into a pocket. Just best case scenario here. It's as simple as this, Jerem. BYU just needs a crazy pregame rainstorm <laughs> to you, set the mood before they knock off a top 15 team at home. Okay. It was insane. You guys were out in the elements <laughs> for the pregame. I was nice and warm in the control room. It was crazy, crazy. Yeah, and then that, during the game, it like let up quite a bit. So remember 2013, BYU comes off a gut punch of a loss at Virginia to a bad Virginia team. Yes, they didn't have Brooklyn at all. And in comes Texas at number 15, riding high after they had blown out some lowly team in their home stadium. I think it was North Texas at the time, 55-7. Yes. Yes. And I think fans were kind of like, I don't know what to expect. I kind of got the same impression of this game as well, where it's, oh, man, BYU just lost to a bad USF team. Maybe this was a trap game of sorts for Boise State, where they see BYU lose at USF. They're six and zero, and they're thinking, "Oh man, we can we can probably get away with just kind of like going through the motions." BYU, to their credit, with the coaching staff and all their position changes, were meticulously prepared for Boise State. They were so well prepared. This was the best coaching job by BYU's staff this year, and it's not I, not close. I know USC was a great win. BYU still had Zach Wilson. They still had Tyson Williams, and they were still healthy for the most part. This is with Baylor Romney, Sione Finau, and three starting offensive linemen out of the game. Blake Freeland played a lot of right tackle. He had not played in a college game ever. This was his first game. BYU got the ball to their stud, Matt Bushman. He went over 100 yards for the first time. Multi- Two touchdowns for the first time. Finally! What took so long? Okay. He's a junior. So everything that BYU fans have been clamoring for, it happened. Pressure on the quarterback. It happened. These unique blitzes, it all happened. Only two sacks, but there was pressure. BYU uh, 
mixed it up, made Boise State see, see some things they hadn't seen all year. That felt like a Kalani Sataki-led defense. You know what I mean? He's the head coach. That felt like – and BYU's been, had, had a good defense. Don't get me wrong, the last three years. That felt like what we've wanted to see from BYU's defense. Yeah. How did BYU do it? With meticulous preparation. Meticulousness. Urgency. Maybe even some desperation in that yeah. moment. If you're not desperate at uh, two and four oh. with Boise State coming in, then don't play the game. How satisfying of a victory against so a rival at home. I'm shocked that BYU won this game, It's it, given the circumstances. Topic two, quick question. Who was the MVP of the game? Lots of, op, uh, lots of guys and opportunities there. So many different guys that played a huge role. For me, it's Baylor Romney. How much can you expect from your third-string quarterback? And I think I started to feel confident when I saw what he did at USF, when he had to come in in just a crazy moment and he takes BYU inside the red zone twice in the last five minutes of the game, and I thought, okay, this kid's a little different, but, but it's USF, you know. Small so it's, like, sam- uh, it's like you go to Costco, you get the sample, you're like, that's pretty good. You're not buying like a, you, you might buy some, but you, you ain't buying a pallet, you know what I mean? This was a pallet sized opportunity against Boise State. I'll tell you the moment I thought BYU has a real chance to win this game. After Boise State had gone down and just run all over the place in their first drive, and they led 7 nothing. That's the norm, though, this year. Baylor Romney on third down with the blitz on, steps up in the pocket, avoids a rusher, and then hits Talon Shumway down the field on the right side for a critical third down conversion on his first drive. And BYU answers right back. So in that moment, I thought, okay, just maybe this kid has it. Poised, confidence. He's a little different. Not too high, not too low. Hey, he's a Mormon Colonies boy, man. They make him different. Now. Baylor Romney, my MVP of the game, 16 big completions, two touchdown passes, 221 yards, and sometimes the hardest throws to make are the ones that are wide open, and he was on target to Matt Bushman on both of them. The fourth and one, which is a beautiful play call, and, of course, the flea flicker that we've talked about and seen a couple of times in today's show. Mine's the coaching staff. I just uh, addressed why I thought it was them. I'll address some others. Sione Finau, by the way. How about that? He goes, what, 11 for 89? 89 yards. In this game, 8.1. Did anyone know Sione Finau's name before this game? You know what I mean? We knew he was buried on the depth chart and thought, okay, if he's playing, perhaps that means BYU's in a desperate position given the uh, depth there. Emmanuel Supa, limited action ride, didn't have a carry in the game. Lopini Katoa. Didn't have a ton of yards per carry, per se, but was effective in getting into the end zone. Had a cut, That first uh, offensive drive for BYU had that kind of 10-yard run where he got stopped five yards short, right? Um, BYU had multiple guys uh, ball out. Dian Gonwoleku, fantastic in this game. Put him in a position to make plays. I don't care where it is. He could play linebacker for BYU. He really could. Little undersized, but he is like tough enough, fast enough, strong enough to do anything the BYU needs. There are some guys that love physicality, and he is one of them. Yes. The offensive line, uh, as we mentioned, really banged up. Like Tristan Hodge, Kiefer Longson, and uh, Thomas Schoff and Keanu Saliapaga. Not playing. Those are four of your top seven. Yet, BYU able to run the ball effectively enough. Didn't run for a ton, 121. But but uh, put BYU in position to make plays. Because what happens? You get a turnover, two plays later, score on a trick play, right? You answer when you need it. BYU was good in the first, got that touchdown, struggled in the second, didn't score in the fourth either, but made the play they needed to at the 34-yard line to push over the 35 with Austin Confences, who goes like six feet in the air, by the way. He's like riding a wave <laughs> of humanity. The Godwalaku push. For a first down, and that wins the game. Very aggressive call, by the way. Did you want BYU to punt in that moment? Mm, I did not. Probably not because of what Boise State had done on their previous two drives. They had scored 15 unanswered. I was nervous at that point that if you kick, you lose. And what, what's harder? Stop Boise State on a full drive or get a, a foot? I think it's get a foot. And BYU has confidence in that scrum package. They had so much confidence in it that they tested it out earlier in the game at the six-yard line <laughs> for two yards. BYU <laughs> snuck it for two yards at the six-yard line, and it was super weird. But it was brought back. We've seen this play a bunch this year. BYU practices this with 15 or 20 defenders and feels like they can get a yard. Every time. They didn't against USC on a fourth down. But other than that, 
It has yielded at least a yard. BYU ham and egged this thing Mm -hmm. with elite level coaching. Like the men's cross country team. We're ham and eggers. Ham and eggers. Yes, I'll take it every time. Let's just go. We may not be the most talented, but let's go. I think BYU is talented, and I think they finally tapped into their talent in a way they hadn't in the previous two games. Previous Uh, three, I guess, with Washington. Well, they had a previous running back lead the team in tackles, so. Yeah, that's weird. (laughs) That was weird. (laughs) That was weird. Does the win over Boise State, Jerem, change the entire narrative on the 2019 BYU football season? I don't think it's changed everything right now, but I think it could. I think we could look back at this game and this moment and say, that changed everything. If BYU also beats Utah State, then I say, absolutely, it changed everything. What BYU did, those changes. BYU could end up 7-5, and 8-4 and four in the regular season should they use this and leverage it. San Diego State is the thing that's catching me more than I thought. So 6-1, and one, three out of the top 25 right now for San Diego State. Played some close games. 7-6 um, and six last year. The previous three years, they were... Th- they won 32 games. We have not paid attention to San Diego State, my, myself included, right? I, I think this could be the turning point. I don't think it is. I think it's changed a lot. Uh, I don't think fans are calling for Kalani Satake's job. I don't think they're calling for so-and-so to call the plays or so-and-so to do this and that. BYU has done some things that have been impressive. Fr- beat a rival, beat a ranked team. Um, but the, which, by the way, Kalani Satake has three top 25 wins this and last year. That's more wins against ranked teams than rivals. He has two wins against rivals, period. So for some reason, BYU is rising up in these games, but not others. So you hope that that BYU can be a little more consistent. And should BYU somehow pull out the final five and finish eight and four? Yes. Then Boise State saved the season. Okay. I don't know that BYU has changed the entire narrative, but everybody that was feeling like BYU might not make it to a bowl game last week oh, clinched the bowl game. is now thinking, yeah. okay, now BYU is going to go to a bowl game. The question is, are they going to win seven games? Could they win out and get to eight wins in the regular season? That kind of confidence is restored because of the level of opponent BYU just beat. Yes. It, it wasn't UNLV in the first start for Baylor Romney and go, oh, nice. It was an undefeated Boise State team, a rival. The BYU had lost three in a row to. BYU now has the luxury of preparing for Utah State off of a bye week. And Utah State the past two seasons has had that luxury against BYU. So oh, can Kalani the Satake, table. Yeah, can Kalani Satake <laughs> and company return the favor and Logan steal the old wagon wheel back and bring it back to Pro, but more importantly, get BYU back to 4-4? Four and four? Remember at the beginning of the season when we all said, you and me specifically. Yes, yes. If BYU's four and four through the first eight, we'll take it. They're in a good place. They'd have a shot for eight, eight in wins. November. Now, they're San, in a good place. San Diego State's a better team than BYU on paper. They haven't played the schedule that BYU has. No. But BYU's three and four. Hard to argue a three and four team better than six. BYU four. has wins against USC and Boise State now. Let's go through San Diego State and who they've beaten. Weber State six to nothing. Uh, they beat a horrible UCLA team by mm-hmm. nine. New Mexico State, awful. Yep. Utah State beat San Diego State yep, only in lost. San Diego. There you go. Uh, Colorado State, not good. <laughs> Although Colorado State lost to Toledo, who beat BYU. <laughs> Narrative, or uh, transitive property. Wyoming, uh, four-point win for San Diego State, and most recently a 10-point win over a bad San Jose State. They are a they, good defensive team they are good that de- wins I just don't know close they have games. Right? I don't know if they have enough offense. So if, yeah. And, and, and here's the question we're not talking about, by the way. Should BYU think about starting Baylor Romney against Utah State? Oh, we're going to discuss it because I, we've got a bye week to deal with. Yes, we have a whole week to discuss that one. We're going <laughs> to control S that one. Jeez. <laughs> Our question of the day. How does the win over Boise State change the way you look at this BYU football season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At DA4 underscore life on Twitter answers. Hopeful. Loved the play calling. BYU was able to punch it in when in the blue zone. Defense played better. Still room for improvement, but all in all, a great game. Hashtag nine and four. If BYU wins the last six games, we I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get so mad that BYU lost Toledo and USF. <laughs> it wouldn't be about nine wins. It would be about what happened there? We could have been ranked. We could have had ten wins. Well, yeah, this game is not too hard, Jim. Out of the ashes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, one game at a time, right? Like if Utah if BYU beats Utah State, now things are very different, right? Very different. So I that was an amazing win. Can BYU continue that? 
The BYU's been very inconsistent, right? Oh, let's see him do it against Utah State. Let's extreme go. Extreme roller coaster. Yeah, it's been wild. bipolar Cougars. Yeah, what's well, the old? It's like the old white roller coaster at lagoon, right? <laughs> A classic, but still fun. Coming up, BS fans Trevor Maddich on the Cougars win over the Broncos and who the best player in college football is, and our going for two picks. Why Jerem does not care that he was wrong this week. I'm so happy I was wrong with one of them. This is BYU Sports Nation. I was right with uh, another. One. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. How did BYU beat Boise State? What does the film say? What does the Fox say? All of these things will be answered tomorrow on After Further Review, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, with Dave Blaine and David on After Further Review, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, tomorrow on the BYU TV app. Or something like that, yeah. right? That's well, there's the all kinds says. of yeah, there's all kinds of things. Sure. Say. Live from Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. It's another Maddich Monday with ESPN College Football Insider and BYU National Champion Trevor Maddich joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, welcome on a winning Monday. Just how does BYU, a team that lost at Toledo and at South Florida, beat 14th ranked and previously unbeaten Boise State? They let it fly. Instead of playing close to the vest and hoping that Boise State would make mistakes with their young quarterback that had to play as a backup because their starter was out, they said, no, nah, we're going to go out and make it happen. So they went forward on fourth down. They got some touchdowns on on plays that were completely unexpected by Boise. The coach looked into his players' eyes at key moments on the sideline and made what seemed like risky calls, but it turned out were the right call for the moment. I think it all added up to a BYU team that played to win. It was pretty gnarly because BYU is playing its third-string quarterback in Baylor Romney, its fourth-string running back in Sione Finau. The leading tackler is a guy that was a running back a few games ago in Tyler Algier. It was, it was crazy. So where do you even start when you talk about who deserves the MVP of the game? And uh, perhaps there were multiple. No, there were multiple. I think the defensive MVP was Diane Gawalaku. I mean, he was absolutely everywhere. Every time I looked up, I saw him making plays in the defensive backfield, behind the line of scrimmage, and the pass and the run. And I tell you, I, I think he belongs in the top tier of BYU defenders in my memory. You know, he's probably not the best, but he, he belongs in the conversation with the best. He has just been a fantastic performer, and he, he was one of the MVPs of this game. But really, I'd go with Baylor Romney as well on offense. Romney throwing the ball it was showing a knack of throwing with anticipation to a spot with the right trajectory based on the coverage. And that's something that we haven't always seen. Actually, we haven't seen much from BYU for a long, long time. Even with Zach Wilson, he's a baller, man. He'd, he'd drop back, he'd see something, man, he'd sling that ball in there, and it was impressive. But when you do that a lot, uh, it'll go the other way sometimes. And what Romney did, I think, was not play like he thought he was – Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre. He just knew where the ball needed to go, and he put the ball there with anticipation. When I say anticipation and trajectory, there were some key completions that he had where he threw that ball high in the air, and it dropped straight down on a vertical route. The reason that's important is because that kind of a route can help the receiver make up for other difficulties. If the ball isn't perfectly accurate, the receiver can slow down and box out that defender. If the ball is a little bit too far out in front, he can kick it into another gear, and he has time to compensate for it. That high trajectory, throw with anticipation, put the ball in a position for the receivers to make a play, and it got the ball out of his hands very quickly so he was less exposed in the pocket. I think you put that together for a freshman walk-on. I thought Baylor Romney was a bit of a revelation as well. ESPN college football analyst and insider Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. Kalani Satake from his own 34-yard line with just over two minutes to play, as you said, elects to go for it on fourth and about a foot to win the game with his scrum package. Austin Kofensis at quarterback, Kairos Tonga in there to help push, Diane Gawoliku in there to help push. What's going through your mind when you see the offense run back on the field in that moment? I loved it. As they were considering it, I was thinking, Coach, go win the game. Go win it now. Because Boise had been on a roll. They had kind of got it figured out, especially with the passing game. They, they had scored um, two consecutive touchdowns 
And then they went out, BYU went out and said, okay, no, we're, we're not going to let you do this again. And the thing is, what what's lost in the analytics and the statistics that are kind of taking over the sports right now is the human element. I mean, coaches will make a decision that the analytics will say not to do because he looks into the eyes of his players on the sideline, and he can tell if they're feeling it. He can tell if they're winning at those kinds of things. He can tell who's healthy and maybe who's not. It goes the opposite way as well. If, if you know that two of your offensive linemen are playing with sprained ankles, well, you're probably not going to run that play. But I think that the players wanted it, and he went with what the players wanted. It's, it's moments like that that programs can be built on, that programs can turn on. Let's go back to a long, long time ago. You guys won't remember this, but your parents will. Holiday Bowl back in 1980. BYU trailing SMU by 20 points with four minutes to go. It's fourth down. So Lavelle Edwards sends the punting team out. But he didn't consult with Jim McMahon. McMahon came over to Lavelle and said, no, no, send the punting team back to the bench. We're going for it on fourth down. It was something Lavelle, like that, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my memory of it anyway. <laughs> and so the, uh, that works for me. So, the, so McMahon goes back out. Lavelle goes with his gut and with his players and looking into the eyes of his guys. And McMahon converts that fourth down and the rest is history. It was, you know, one of the greatest comebacks in the history of college football because of that decision to go forward on fourth down. And a big part of that was the look in McMahon's eyes. So I think that the, 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 it was not as important as that game being a bowl game and all that, but it was critical to the trajectory of this program that, Kalani Sataki looked into his players' eyes, and they looked back into his and says, Coach, we got your back on this. We got this. We can do this. And then they went out and did it. You know, and then after the game, the, just the way the players talked about how much they love their coach, about how hard they play for their coach. And I think that, that's, a, that's a moment that galvanizes. And so that, that was much more than feeling a win. Uh, that, was, that was a team that came together. Did this win change the narrative of the entire season? Because there were some uh, hot topics coming in, including Kalani Stockin, his job and renewal or not, and a losing record, maybe missing a bowl game. Did this change everything, or is it just the tip of the iceberg? Well, it changed everything for a couple of weeks, didn't it? The, uh, they go to bye weeks, then they go into Utah State. But when you look, if coming into the season, before they played a the game, if someone were to tell you, that with this terrible schedule, not terrible, very difficult schedule, that BYU would face two teams that were ranked at the time they played them, and they'd beat them both. And then they'd lose to two other teams that were ranked at the time they played them. They'd be two and two against ranked teams. What would you say? You take it every time. Awesome. Every time. Now, you wouldn't take losing to Toledo and losing to USF, so this has been a bit of a roller coaster. But beating those teams that were ranked at the time they played, USC's not ranked now, but USC was on a roll. Uh, they, had, uh, they, they were doing great things when, when BYU beat them in overtime. And I think that you know, the roller coaster, the highs show the potential of the team. The lows, losing at Toledo and at USF, show things that need to be corrected. But did they not correct them against Boise State? I say they did. Because instead of letting the other team get back into it and eventually win in the second half, you had a Boise State team that led going into the second half and then came storming back after BYU took the lead. And instead of the same narrative of those two losses, BYU flipped the switch, changed the narrative, and finished the game against Boise State. I think that is, that is phenomenal, and it should stop that talk. I, I never engaged in that talk anyway. But for the people who did, I think if you look at the way things are happening in this BYU program, there's a lot to be encouraged about. Now, it's one thing to beat a team like USC with Zach Wilson and Tyson Williams and all of your horses going at full speed. But BYU just knocked off the 14th ranked team with Baylor Romney, Sione Finau, and a banged up offensive line. What does this say about the coaching staff this week, Trevor? The coaching staff got the best out of their guys, didn't they? They knew what they could do and what they probably couldn't do. And they geared the game plan towards what they could do. In addition to that, you see, I think, one of the advantages of having coordinators on the field. 
um, because you can you can look into the eyes of the players and you can see how much confidence they had. You talk to the quarterback, you talk to the offensive line. Three starting offensive linemen were out, and there's Jeff Grimes over there, who's a who's a grinder from the SEC. You know, talking to those guys, saying, "Hey, you know, what can you do?" And then he decides whether to believe them or not based on what he sees on the field and what he sees in their eyes. And all that adds up to knowing what he has, knowing what he doesn't have, and how to match his play calling with the situation as it is. And I, I thought it was uh, – I thought this, this is one of the best coaching jobs from a tactical standpoint. I've seen it a long time. We talked about the offense going for it. The defense was unleashed, weren't they? I mean, they, they were attacking. They were blitzing. They were, they were saying – if Boise is going to win, they're going to win under maximum pressure. If they're going to make a play, they're not going to make it because we give them time and we sit back and bend but don't break. They're going to make a play with one of our guys hitting them in the mouth at the time they release that ball or at the time they run that ball. And I love the shift in defensive emphasis in this game. BYU has five games left, Trevor. Utah State, Liberty, Idaho State, UMass, San Diego State. It would appear that BYU has three likely wins on there, right? Utah State and now San Diego State. San Diego State, 6-1, and one, three out in the polls. So this is a good San Diego State team. Perhaps BYU is playing another ranked team. We'll see. What are the chances, in your opinion, BYU wins the last five to close it out in the regular season? Well, winning the last five is a lot to ask because these are really good teams. Utah State, um, you know, Utah State has, has always been tough. Uh, for, and especially tough for BYU. They, they've, BYU hasn't been close to Utah State uh, in a lot of recent games. You're right about San Diego State. They're also one of the best teams in the group of five. And don't look now, but Liberty's five and two. Liberty is five and two. So in order to get to a bowl with three wins now, they've got to win three. You got to figure that they'll beat Idaho State and UMass. Well, they've got to, then they've got to steal one against Utah State, Liberty, or San Diego State. And I'll tell you this: that BYU in that closing stretch. Say what you want about the Toledo and USF games. That's in the past now. In order for BYU to make a bowl, they will earn it because at least one of those wins will be against a really, really good team that BYU traditionally struggles with. Trevor, great to talk to you. Um, Let's go ahead and finish with this. Tell us your Heisman winner as of this moment. Joe Burrow, LSU quarterback. He is by far the most effective deep passer in all of college football. When you, you know, he, he has the highest completion percentage overall, but normally that happens in the nation. Normally when that happens, it's because the quarterback is throwing a lot of short passes at or near the line of scrimmage or behind it with bubble screens. So, yay, big completion percentage, not defended, no big deal. Joe Burrow also has the highest completion percentage of balls that travel at least 15 yards down the field. He's 78% overall, 76% when the ball travels at least 15 yards in the air. <laughs> Whoa. And you, yeah, you combine that with the games he's got coming up. I mean, he's got to play Auburn. He's got to play at Alabama. And if he's going to have ample opportunity in massive monster games for a Heisman showcase, and I think he's up to the task. And if you ask me today, your Heisman winner is Joe Burrow. Hey, buckle up for big-time college football coming soon. Trevor, thanks so much for the time. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how. Literally, odds just came out, and Joe Burrow's the favorite in Vegas. So there you go. Trevor knows what he's talking about. Coming up, why I'm stoked I didn't get one of my going for two picks in particular. Plus, how does a red coat make it into Lavelle Edwards Stadium? We need to take care of this. Like a Brit? What are we talking about? Details on the way. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> it's back-to-back BYU Sports content Wednesday mornings. BYU TV this week. Uh, AFR immediately before BYU Sports Nation. Starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on BYU TV. No Coordinator's Corner today. No Satake Show with the bye week. We'll be back next week. Off of a win. Oh! I know. I was kind of hoping we'd do the shows this week, but it's a bye week. We take the week off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> We are rolling BYU Sports Nation on a winning Monday with today's BYUSN Headlines Part 2. BYU upsets previously unbeaten and number 14 Boise State 28-25, snapping a three-game losing streak to the Broncos. 
and a three-game losing streak overall this season. In his first career start, third-string quarterback Baylor Romney throws for 221 yards and two touchdowns. Cougars, as we mentioned, on a bye week. They'll take on Utah State to open up November. Kick time and broadcast information released earlier today. It's set for ESPN2, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. So, uh, BYU uh, TV is kind of the kickoff, 9 Eastern. Then. There you go. Uh, yeah, math is hard. Jamal Williams had a touchdown catch in the Packers' 42-24 win over the Raiders. And Taysom Hill also had a touchdown catch uh, for the Saints in a 36-25 win over the Bears. Fifth-ranked BYU women's soccer routes St. Mary's 8-0, securing their highest-scoring game against a West Coast Conference opponent this season. And anybody. They now have an 8 to nothing win, 7 to nothing win, 6 to nothing win, and a 5 to one win. I'd say things are going well. Last three, 19 to one Yeah. Elise Flake, Michaela Kulhan each scored two goals against St. Mary's. Flake now with 33 career goals, putting her in a tie for eighth in the BYU record book. And BYU men and women's cross country took first and second at the NCAA pre-nationals invitational this weekend. Connor Mance won the men's race. Jacob Heslington took fourth. Erica Burke Jarvis won the women's race. And Courtney Wayman took fourth as well. Jeremy, it's time that we go for two. Can you predict the future? These guys think they can. We're going for two on BYU Sports Nation. Going for two results brought to you by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. My first pick, BYU against Boise State will give up more passing yards than rush yards. It was close. Barely. BYU had been giving up 240-plus rushing yards per game to that point and only 188 through the air. Boise State passes for 185. They rush for 174. So I get that one by 11 yards. Yeah, BYU was so bad that this one was allowed. That's why you did it. It was like, (laughs) you would normally have more pay. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) They haven't done it. Pick two. This game will be determined by eight or fewer points. I was feeling uh, like this was not going to happen when BYU went up 28 to 10. But sure enough, the Broncos, it's college football, high level. Everyone makes a run, 28-25. So I think for the first time this year, I get both. Hallelujah. Yeah, good job. Thanks, man. Pick one. This is where I was absolutely wrong, and I couldn't be happier to be wrong. I thought Boise State would just just pound BYU in this game, given all the circumstances coming in. I said Boise State will cover, meaning by 8+. plus. <laughs> I'm so happy to be wrong on this one. Yep. BYU won the game. After the game, I was like, yes, I didn't get my pick. Pick two, BYU will rush for fewer than 150 yards. I didn't think BYU would be able to run the ball effectively with a banged up O-line and forced to running back. BYU ran for 121. It was enough. It was enough. Their ga- every game's different. In this game, 121 was enough to win. And uh, BYU didn't win the game by running the ball effectively. BYU was timely in their execution, had crucial points, and ran a couple of trick plays for a touchdown pass. What was BYU season average on the ground coming into the game? I don't remember. Yeah, okay. But it's it was bottom 30. Yeah. Yeah, BYU wasn't good. And 121 was, yeah. For those keeping score at home, Blaine Fowler got both of his wrong. He said BYU would have three or more sacks. Mm. And two. And that they'd be 100% scoring in the red zone. Mm. Also, BYU oh. missed a field goal in the red zone. That was the issue. Which, by the way, can we talk about Jake Aldroyd for a moment? Um, I'm still up 9-5, by the way, in the standings. Yes, you so, are. Exciting. Um, Jake Aldroyd made 10 of his first 11. Jake the Mag! I still think Jake's a good kicker. I think he's a fantastic punter. He's missed four of his last seven. So that's a bit of an issue right now. I don't know what uh, is going on with Jake Oldroyd, but uh, certainly needs to improve because in a close game, you need to make a field goal here or there to uh, put you over the top. Let's just go ahead and say that his nickname is now Jake the Make again, even though he doesn't like as as much as some of the other ones. Wait, once he declared that he did It was like from that moment on. It, struggles have... Yeah, so play. maybe we don't talk about any nickname. Maybe. Okay. Yep. Are we going to be that superstitious here? <laughs> I'm a little stitious, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, congratulations on your four point going for two lead. You got to, you went plus one on me, though. You're hey, cut, you're cut. Don't it. call it a comeback. I'll take it. Coming up, how did the Cougars beat the Broncos? They'll tell you after the break. Yeah, the best of the best reactions from BYU Boise State post game. If you missed any of it and weren't up until one o'clock in the morning, here's your chance. What? This is BYU Sports Nation. You know what? Okay. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
If you can't watch or listen to BYU Sports Nation live, guess what? It's 2019. You can listen or watch it whenever you want, okay? BYUSN.com, download the podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review every BYU Sports Nation uh, or the show. And Spencer Linton will uh, deliver a personally signed Woo! gift. But no, he won't do that. With all my free time. Please do that. Yes, it's a bye week. You have uh, only six shows that you're on this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> only it's a light s- week. Only six. It's a light, light yeah. week. Let's relive some of the top post-game reaction from key players in the BYU-Boise State victory and their head coach, Kalani Satake, where the BYU offense and defense, I mean, come on, looked noticeably different and clearly more aggressive in that victory against the rival Broncos. Coach Satake was asked post-game, who's in charge of the play-calling duties in the game on both sides of the ball? He responded this way. Uh, play calling is a collaborative effort from everybody. We, we, we work together on defense and offense, and so going into the game, we kind of have an idea of what we're going to get done, and so that's, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Okay, it was clear that based on what Kalani Satake has done in his previous responsibilities as the defensive coordinator, primarily at Utah, that he had a heavy hand in the way that the BYU defense presented itself on Saturday night. Yeah, that much is fine. It, I don't know that it matters who's calling the plays per se. It's just how BYU execute. And offensively, BYU had some wrinkles in there that were fun. It's not like BYU never ran a trick play prior to now, by the way. USC, remember a throwback from uh, Hall to Wilson? Remember the fake reverse where Tyson Williams kept it? It's not like, uh, you know, people are like, oh, did Aaron Roderick call the out? Jeff Cry. Does it matter? Jeff Grimes was on the sideline for, for the, the first, first time. time. I don't know that it matters who calls the plays. The result is is what matters. And if Kalani Stock is head coach, he can require you know and and uh, collaborate with everyone on what he wants done. And what was done was way better. And I'm happy to see that BYU mixed it up and it worked. You lose to Toledo in South Florida. You change things against a superior opponent. And you take care of business. I, that's good coaching. BYU football social media accounts sent out some of the insiders' footage and some of the recap after the game. And I saw Jeff Grimes in a way I've never seen him before. Very emotional, Just excited. Happy, jumping up and down on the sideline, celebrating. I was like, oh. It was a big I, win. I like this. It was yeah, a in the big mo- win. In the moment. He was celebrating with the players in the moment as they were completing all these big plays. It's yeah, fun to I see. Liked it. Yeah, he's he's a little less emotional, right? So it's fun to see him kind of break out there Absolutely. and get excited. That means it's more meaningful in that moment. Right? BYU snaps a three-game losing streak to Boise State and a three-game losing streak this season. Tight end Matt Bushman said breaking that streak was obviously a big motivation and pushing forward for the rest of the season. Well, I mean, losing three games just... It sucks. So, I mean, go, breaking off that streak with a big win for us is going to definitely help us out for the second half of the season. I mean, we're just we – needed, we needed that momentum. We needed that, that energy. We needed to bring some, some happiness back to the Velodrome Stadium. So, we're just grateful the fans showed out through this crazy weathered game. And, uh, yeah, we're just excited for the future. Yeah, can we talk about the fans that showed up? Amazing showing. I thought that off of three straight losses, two of which shouldn't have been losses – given those conditions, that there wouldn't be a lot of people at the game. Late start, terrible weather. The fans were fantastic. You were fantastic. Whether you were at home listening, supporting, or you went, amazing showing. Amazing showing. Yeah, I mean, I I was hoping that BYU would have 50,000 fans at the game. They announced 58. 58 weren't there, but... It was over 50. It was over 50. Not bad. For sure. Earlier this week, Chaz Ayu, BYU linebacker, said the team is... Playing for Kalani Satake and his job. Isaiah Kafusi was asked after the game about that and uh, had this to say. I, uh, I, don't, I don't think people really realize and uh, understand how much we love Kalani. Um, he, he's a great mentor, a phenomenal coach. Uh, I, I think people are, are too quick to, you know, kind of a, to criticize and attack him. Um, but the, the whole team, we're, we're behind Kalani. We love him. Uh, we, we play for him, you know, regardless of whether his job's on the line or not. You're going to get, you know, 123 guys who are playing for Kalani. Uh, I, I love him. He's a great coach, phenomenal coach. And, um, you know, regardless of, of what's, you know, happening, what, what's up, in, in, you know, what's next, 
I, I think we just all love Kalani. You know, that's just kind of the, the bottom line is we love him and, and uh, we'll fight for him any day. Okay, it, this has become a recurring theme for BYU football players under Kalani Satake. The word love is mentioned very often. I feel like he connects with his players on a level that many coaches don't. But his results have been 500 thus far. Right. He's had some monumental wins and some head-scratching losses. So now the challenge for Kalani Satake is, how do I consistently win? Yes, because look, all of us want Kalani Satake to be the head coach yes. as a person. The, the on-field result is, at the end of the day, what matters the most. And if BYU can win and have that, amazing. We all like tolerated the robotic, stoic Bronco Mendenhall personally, right? He's, he's very about the process and the thing. And the, the thing that I love the most about Bronco Mendenhall is that he won a lot, right? Likeability of a coach is one thing. Winning is another. If you can combine the two, that's great. And if uh, BYU can figure it out with Kalani Satake, now we're in business. Now he can be, as he jokingly said in season one, I want to be the Polynesian Lavelle Edwards. Like, <laughs> if you win, you could be here forever. He could. It's just a different age. And so uh, I know that he wants to be in a position like Lavelle Edwards was, but I don't, I don't know that he can be, especially after what we saw on Saturday, where it was clear he was heavily involved in the defensive game plan. And does he need to be for the rest of the season? I would and love it. tenure at BYU, right? I would love it. Yeah, we'll see. Coming up, two BYU teams combined for a score of 279 to nothing. Who did that? Okay. And the Redcoats are leaving, Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. Shout out to today's guest, ESPN College Football Insider Trevor Maddich. Shows on demand via the podcast and the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Football. Brigham upsets number 14, Boise State, 28 25 Saturday night, snapping a three game losing streak to the Broncos and this season. In his first career start, your boy Baylor Romney threw for 221 yards and two touchdowns, both to Matt Bushman, who had his first multi TD game and first 100 yard receiving game. What took so long? The Cougars are off this week, but it was announced that the next game at Utah State will be at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2. Cougars in the NFL. And that'll include Matt Bushman soon, Jerem, in the NFL. Hopefully after another year. Jamal Williams scored a touchdown receiving in the Packers' 42-24 win over the Oakland Raiders. Taysom Hill also had a touchdown catch for the Saints in a 36-25 win in Chicago over the Bears. And a touchdown catch. Awesome. Michael Davis had seven tackles, passed deflection in a 23-20 Chargers loss to the Titans. Fred Warner had two tackles in a 9-0 Niners win over the Redskins. Still undefeated for the Niners. Wow. Ugly, ugly game. Doesn't matter because they're winning. Kyle Van Noy and the New England Patriots take on Harvey Longy and the New York Jets tonight on Monday Night Football. Could Sam Darnold pull off the upset against Tom Brady? He doesn't have mono. Fifth-ranked Brigham. Oh, let's – sorry, soccer. Soccer. There you go. Fifth-ranked Brigham pounded St. Mary's 8-0 Friday night. BYU has outscored its last three opponents 19-1. Cross country. BYU men's and women's cross country take first and second at the NCAA pre-nationals invitational this weekend. Connor Mance winning the men's race. Jacob Hessington taking fourth. On the women's side, the Cougars also finished first and fourth. Erica Burke Jarvis, your winner, and Courtney Wayman in fourth. Jimmer! For that, led Panathinaikos with 23 points on six of shooting, six of seven shooting from distance, and a 104 88 win over P A K O. Volleyball. Ninth ranked BYU lost in five sets to San Diego on Friday night. What? Outside hitter Maddie Robinson led the Cougars, tying a career high 18 kills, hit 341, three digs, three assists. But San Diego alone atop the West Coast Conference. Ooh. They'll women's rematch, basketball. They'll rematch in November, by the way. Charlie Cream's bracketology puts BYU women's hoops in the preseason NCAA tournament. Uh, 10 seed over uh, against 7 seed Auburn. Hockey. Loses to Utah State 5-4 on Saturday night. Jacob Eisenstadt scored two goals for the Cougars in the second and third periods. Swimming and diving. And men in swim and diving both won its home meet against uh, Colorado Mesa. You used to live in Grand Junction. Mm -hmm. Connor Sterling won the 100 free and the 100 backstroke. Rugby. The men's team beat Utah State 167 (laughs) to nothing. Okay. What? On Saturday, the women's team beat Colorado Mesa 112 to nothing. Wow. That's crazy. Some domination there. Today's rise and shout-outs now. Jeremy, we've been talking about it all show. Coast to the BYU Redcoat girl. (laughs) 
<laughs> on it's on cra- Twitter, it's, it's Brooke. Crazy. <clears throat> it's Brooke underscore Lynn 108 on the Twitter machine. Multiple BYU fans have seriously offered to buy her a blue coat, including senior associate athletic director Liz Darger. Nice. <laughs> Mine goes to Baylor Romney, Colony's boy. Love it. Uh, yeah, elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. How does the wind change the season for BYU football? Still in a state of confusion, says that Cameron4474 on Instagram. Defense played better stopping the run. Baylor played like a stud with help from Bushman and Fino and the O-line. Go into the bye week that same attitude as last week and into the USU game, and it will be a better result. Sorry to Dennis. No time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. <laughs> we'll see you.